Considering the subject, the mystery of the firstborn sons, the mystery of the firstborn sons, the mystery of the firstborn son, the mystery of the firstborn son. I like us to be on our feet so we can read. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I come from Scapa, Kitabala, or Stephen. At the count of three, one to three, go. And the Lord spoke unto Moses. As everybody stand. And the Lord spoke, sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whosoever openeth the womb among the children, among the children of Israel, both of men and both of man and beast, it is mine. Amen. Sit down. Hallelujah. We are talking about the mystery of the firstborn son. The mystery of the first person. From the origin of mankind or before the foundation of the earth was being sculpted, God has built and bestowed to man all that which he need in order to fulfill his destiny on earth. So before every firstborn child was born, God bestowed that firstborn son with certain mandate interest of his family in order to carry his family from darkness to the place of light. But the thing baffles me that when you look at every family and when you look at the way and the way the the, the firstborn is being removed this echo from them. But the lifestyle of all the firstborn you discover that it is like they take commands from the second born and the third born. So but it was not so from the beginning because the foundation of the earth before the origin was being emerged or planted upon the cosmos, God bestowed every firstborn with what it takes to, to lead his or her family on earth. But now, all of this, or uh, majority of the second, sorry, of the second born or the third born are taking control and audacity in the family. Listen to me, it is an error when you sit down. And you watch the leadership of the second and the third born overrise your dominion in the family. It is a sign that something went wrong, sir. So when you discover that something like that begin to happen, when you sit and you, because for 
the fact that the second born is in America does not mean you submit under his jurisdiction and under his government. Because many of them are in America and they thought that since they are in America, they can influence the entire family. And it baffles me that many of the first born, they are sold their birthright to the second born by yielding to every demand and instruction. The Lord said it is time to restore the mandate and the command of the first born sons. It is a problem in our time and in our generation. It's a problem. Money has caused all the second bones and the third bones to have dominion of that city over their firstborn. And the place we are afraid, the Bible says, God instructed Moses to sanctify all the firstborn, including beasts and including animals. Which means that even if you are an animal, the second bone does not carry what it takes to override your influence upon the earth. As far as you are the firstborn to your father, certain right and dominion have been bestowed unto you to exercise a certain level of authority upon the cosmos, upon the earth. But why? You sat quiet and you watch those that you are older than them by five years. They are the one orchestrating dominion and authority over your family in the name of money. And many of the parents, they sit quiet and watch an abomination ringing over their families. The first bone is older than the second or the third bone for about five to eight years. But yet, the first bone has no audacity. It is through the same money speaks. But listen to me, as far as life is concerned, authority speaks, man they speak and position speaks. There is a difference between power and authority. You can have power, which is money, because any man that is wealthy, which means that he has power, you have power to carry out certain spiritual exercise on earth. But listen to me, you may not have authority to exercise certain things. You may have money, you have all it takes to tie this road, but you don't have the authority. You can be wealthy, but you don't have the authority that God has bestowed upon the firstborn son of every given family. We have failed these principles. Every firstborn child came with his or her own blessing. So when you discover that your second born or the third born began begin to exercise dominion, and at times when you look at the kind of wealth a man you are older than is controlling the kind of influence, even though you are happy if your brother is your sister, but you are a little bit intimidated. There is a funny statement that we make that when your brother is on top of ripe mango, you will eat ripe mango. It's true, but not in every situation. You can even be eating the ripe mango, but you are not happy. You are saying that what if the both of us are on top of this ripe mango trees? We are going to eat the best, best of it. He can be eating the best and he sent the one that I've been eating by bats. So you are eating from the crumbs. There are many of you, the second and the third bone came and superseded you in authority in your family. And some of these things the Lord said at times is caused by the parents. You watch the second born insulting your first born and you say nothing about it. So what happened is that you are indirectly willing the authority and the mandate of the first born to the second child. So the second child has lost complete respect for the first born. And that is how the first child begins to lose his or her place in the heart of the parents. And there are certain families that as they are growing up, the parents tend to love the second and the third child better than the first born. So it becomes a problem. A little that kind of process is being activated upon the earth. There is already a cause that begins to follow the first child. And the first child, because normally, under normal circumstances, the first child carries the body of the family. He carries the responsibility of the family upon his shoulders. The sins, because by privilege, even the second born or the third born that came after him, those are people you remove their pampas, you watch their excreta and their dresses. But they have grown up at times, they become wealthy because of the prices you have paid. You have labored for them to be wealthy because you know that when they are up, you yourself you are up. But in this our time, when the second born goes up, you are eating, but mangoes that are ripe but have been eaten by bats. They say when your brother is on a black plum tree, you eat black plums. There are some brothers, even the unripe plums, you will not see. But those are people you clean their pampas. What happened? The right of the firstborn child has been tampered with. What is happening? Each time you begin to notice this kind of a thing, there is a negative prophecy that has been pronounced. So what man need to do in order to reverse that pronouncement?
transition, you need to do what we call a spiritual transition. There need to be a spiritual transportation system where you can enter into the spirit to reverse that protocol. When you travel back some years ago, listen to me, it is no normal. You are more than your genius by 10 years, but the kind of influence that person command, you, 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 are, you become terrified. There is a prophecy. Check the back process. Something went wrong around, around the line. Something went wrong. At times you are far educated than them. But what they control is beyond your imagination. We, are, we, are, we have come to restore the mandate back to the first born. And if you are a second born here, the fact that you can be wealthier or intelligent than the first born does not mean you have authority than him. Because by being a first born, God has weaved onto him certain inheritance, so he has the capacity to lay a curse on your head and it manifest. Because he's in your soul. This is an abomination that is moving in families. Many of you watch the second born in getting you. In the family meeting, sir, you cannot speak when you the, when the second born is there. You cannot speak. They say, our money is talking, who is this one? Who is this one? So according to them, it's all about money. How did you trouble about this insolence? Is this thing not bothering your mind at all? Something is wrong, sir. It's not normal. Your dead born, at times it's even your food follower. Because of a little opportunity to be in America. America is not heaven. At times, before you see me in America, you contributed for him to be there. But now, you are even the one who printed the passport, follow up the documents. But when he got there now, you have become like toilet paper. You are nothing in his presence. So your right have been thwarted in the presence of your second or third follower. What is happening? When they come back to Cameroon, they are giving you chicken change. They will call you and give you 20,000. And the problem is that some of the firstborn, they have sold their rights to him. Because they are in America, they can call and command you anyhow. You know you are not happy about this decision, but because it's well tired than you, you don't have a choice. So you submit to every least thing he says. It's not supposed to be like that. God is not happy when the firstborn sells his right. No matter how broke you are, do submit to your second or third born. It is not possible. It's not possible. Let them go to hell with the America. It is not America that makes it best. Listen to me. It is not everything money can solve. A time will come, you will need the presence of a person you will not see. So when you are wealthy and God is blessing you, remember the people that helped you to climb that ladder. Listen, when you cross a bridge in life, don't break that bridge behind you. Because a time come, you may experience a float ahead. You may need to return back and pass on that same bridge. And what betides you if you destroy that bridge? There are certain people that before you got to where you are, they begin to the find out the platform and the, the, the bridges you cross in order to arrive at that place. Make sure you remember people that help you to become who you are. You remember them for the rest of your life. Because there are people we call them destiny. Once you disengage yourself from them, you disengage yourself from your destiny. They are part of you. It's just like the ear cannot set without the eye, I cannot cope. Or the eye cannot say without the nose. I will cope without the nose. No. Or maybe the leg begin to say the head is not there, I can still cope. It's a lie. There are some people around your life that you cannot dispatch yourself away from them. God has given some people to you as intercessors. The man may not be wealthy enough, but he has paid certain dimension of price. When I see young people in my family growing up, they are wealthy, and they think I am the kind of person where you cannot use your wealth to intimidate me. I will not beg you. I cannot, you cannot intimidate me with your wealth. Because I know that a time is coming. A time, the Bible says, they that trust in God, they shall be as Mount Zion that cannot be removed, but they are bited for them. You will go to America, you will be removed by challenges, but I will abide. I will stay. When the fruit comes, I will abide. Don't sell your bed right for anything. For nothing. If truly that person is your brother, you should remember him. You should remember him. 
Many of you may not be your brother. It may be a child or someone God has used you to sponsor in the days ahead. And after some years, the person is becoming wealthy, but he cannot remember you. Sir, we have come so you may understand the mystery of the first being. So it is something that God has bestowed upon every first child. You are carrying a certain dimension of blessings. So before the world existed, that dimension of blessings has already been mandated for every firstborn child. So when you grow up and you discover that all your siblings, the ones who senior, they are controlling the kind of wealth you cannot control. It is a sign that there is there is a wrong manipulation. That, that there is something that we need to trace in the spirit. We have to recorrect something. The, the, I mean, there is a bounty we have to trace correctly. Something is wrong. Something is wrong somewhere. You have to recover the spirit and get what I'm saying if you go back into the scripture the mother of Esau and Jacob in the Bible thank you what happened is that when Sarah was was pregnant when Sarah was pregnant the Bible says the children that fought in her womb there was a serious combat, a serious war in her womb. And then the Bible says she began to pray. She is treated of the Lord. What is happening to her? And the Lord said, Behold, two manner of nations and in thy bowels. Two manner of people. He said something. He said, the, the junior one, he said, one shall be greater than the other. He said that the senior brother shall serve the junior one. Wow. Something went wrong along the line. Some of you, the reason why you are kneeling before your junior one, check the prophecy that was given before you were born. Something is wrong somewhere. We need to correct it. And if you begin to study the scripture, you will discover that even as, as God gave that prophecy, it came to pass. It came to pass. Because along the line, Esau, who happens to be the senior brother to Jacob, sold his bed right. What happened to him was that the prophecy began to speak the prophecy began to speak because that prophecy was given before the both of them were born the prophecy began to manifest so what happened is one day Esau came back home he was hungry and his brother Jacob has prepared potatoes Irish and it was his best pepper soup <laughs> it was his best so and he cried out to his brother he said I am hungry can you give me a little of these potatoes let me eat and the brother said no i will give you one condition if and only if you can say your bed right to me for a plate of potatoes he sold his bed rice his bed right for a plate of potatoes that is what many of you have done you sold your right as the firstborn because of fifty thousand you are asking from your junior brother who is wealthier than you you sold your bed right because you needed him to give you 200,000, you sold your bed right. He will even send you to go and clear his plot. To go and clear his plot before he gives you the money. What have you done? You have sold your bed right to your junior brother. Even if he's in America, you can, you can command him to me before you. No matter the wealth, you need to maintain your stand as your senior before him. Money has, the love of money has caused many people to lose their consciences, to lose their integrity. You bow before the God of Mammon. When you bow before your junior one because of money, you are bowed to Satan. You are bowed to an idol. How can you worship your junior one? Because of money, you've lost your right. That was the same thing Esau did. And Esau said, what am I even doing with that right? He never knew or understood the implication of what he was saying. He said, what am I doing with that right? He said, take the bed right, I'm hungry. Give me potatoes. Give me pepper soup. And that was how. And what happened is that Jacob was an intelligent man. The Bible called him a supplanter, a 419 Jacob is a 419 <laughs> If your child name is Jacob, we sanctify him. No wonder when Jacob encountered God, God changed his name. He said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, you shall be called Israel. Because as long as he's bearing that name, each uh, Jacob, he shall keep he shall keep scamming people. He shall, Four one nine mentality will continue to pursue. <laughs> God said, "Your name will no longer be called Jacob; you shall be called Israel." What is the meaning of Israel? He said, "For thou art power; you fought with God, and you overcome me. You prevailed. 
He fought with God and he prevailed. So God said, From today, your name shall be called Jacob. Even when God spoke, God said, One of you shall be greater than the other. Meaning that God was giving a prophecy that Jacob normally was supposed to be greater than Esau. But something happened when their father grew up. Isaac he changed the prophecy from the beginning. And it, even from the beginning, when, when Esau sold his birthright, it manifested. The time came when Isaac was supposed to die. He spoke to all his children. He spoke sorry to, to, to Esau because Esau was his favorite son. He was the firstborn. He said, go and prepare me pepper soup because he was a wonder. Bring this so I can eat and I bless you. Say, when my soul is happy, I will bless you. Listen to me. It takes a man to provoke a blessing. Blessing don't fall like that. There are people that God has with them certain dimension of mandate to command blessing to rain upon a dispensation. So when you are hungry for a certain dimension of a blessing, you bring a seed or a sacrifice and let the priest command that blessing to rest in thy life. And now what happened is that when their mother overheard, when the father was saying it, he called Jacob and whispered, God's Kongosai mother. He called Jacob, he said, I overheard your father telling your senior brother to go and prepare his favor right in the soup so he can bless him and die. He said, but I will help you. So the mother took a little goat and hurriedly prepared it because the mother knew how the husband liked it, like the pepper soup. So she killed the goat herself, prepared it herself, and then there was a certain manipulation because the Bible says Esau was a hairy person. So he had a lot of hairs all over his body. So why Jacob began to contemplate and he said that my brother is a hairy person. He has hairs more than I do. He is heavily bearded all over his body. The mother said, I know what to do. So they took the back of the goat and wear it on his hand. They wore it on his hands. So what happened is that when they approached the father, after he quickly cooked it and he came to the father, he said, Who is there? He said, It is thy son, Esau. That was Jacob's answer. He said, It is thy son, Esau. He said, Come to me. When he came to him, he said, That I may embrace you. When he embraced him, he said, The body is like the body of my son, Esau, but the voice is the voice of. In sentiment, but he was not sure about his sentiment. He was not sure about it. But how did he get the blessing? The one funniest thing is that when he was pronouncing the blessing, he was making pronunciation that was returning back to the original owner. He said the voice is like the voice of Jacob, but the skin is like the skin of my soul Esau. So when he was giving the blessing, he was pronouncing it over the jurisdiction of Esau. Even if Jacob changes his best it can never be Jacob. It can never be Esau. So when he began to say, God bless you, he released blessing, he was returning back to Esau. But Jacob was foolish. He was a supplanter, a forward nine at this time in field. It was from there that Jacob had the, it was from there that Isaac, he reversed the blessing that was stolen, that God gave. Listen to me, after some years, some years ago when the two of them met, Behold, it was Jacob who came and bowed before Esau. Let us read. He came and bowed before his brother. Their greatness was uncomparable. Their greatness was un- Let's go to Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33, so we can read from there. Genesis 33. We are going to be reading from verse number 1. He says, and Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and Esau come, and with him four hundred men, and he divided the children unto Leah, and unto Rachel, and unto the two handmaids. Now listen, verse 1 said, his brother, only the protocol that were working with him were four hundred people. Four hundred men that were accompanying Esau. The same man that the Bible says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. The same man that was hated, but the father came and lay hand and then he, he reversed the cross and supernatural blessings. Verse 2 said, And he put the handmaid and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hid the most. Verse 3, And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. So before 
Esau approached Jacob, he bowed down. He was doing like an Ausa man seven times before his brother Esau could even approach because of the kind of authority he saw the man wielding upon the earth. And he said, and he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children which God had graciously given thy servant. Then maidens came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel, and they bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou by all this truth which I, I met? And he said, These are to find grace in thy sight, my Lord. He was calling his own brother that he stored his blessing, his bed right, my Lord. And he sent those blessings, those I mean, gifts to him to beg him because he knows that his brother will take off his life for tampering with his bed right. And listen to what Esau replied, verse 9. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother, that thou hast unto thyself. Sit down. He said, I have enough. I have enough. You know that what I don't need what you are about to give unto me. I have more than enough. So the prophecy was reversed. So what is happening to some of you, it is a negative prophecy that was pronounced. It is a satanic manipulation that took place in the realm of the spirit that has thwarted your position as the firstborn. So you no longer have right to operate as the firstborn in your family. When you go for family meeting, when the second or the third born arrives, they give you more honor and praises than you the firstborn. You are being the one toiling. If there is any family challenge, you are the one trying to put the family in peace. But because the firstborn just came back with Toyota from America, so they give you more honor. I remember one time when my brother came back from America, from Germany, we went for a certain amount um, barrier in the village. When they arrived, it was only him they were giving a hug. They were saying that brother, brother, brother. <laughs> because they have seen a car. Because human beings, they try to, they try to like um, diagnose blessing by properties. But I keep teaching you that do not strive to be wealthy. Strive to be blessed. Because the blessing is more heavier than wealth. Wealth can die. Wealth can get finished. But the blessing never gets finished. When a man is blessed, no matter the effort that is being made on ground, in order to cripple that man or bring his back on the ground, all those efforts will end up in futility. Why? Because he's been blessed in Christ. So Jesus has bestowed all he takes for him to stand despite the effort carried out by Satan against his destiny. He has the right. He's the first one. And I submit to that. But at least there are portions for the second and the third one. There are portions. There are portions. I get what I'm saying. The fact that you are the second or the third bone or the last bone does not mean you shall not be blessed. The only thing is that even if you become blessed, do not take the place of the first bone in your family. It is dangerous and it's risky. It can cause you to die premature death. Many second and third bone they died premature death. Why? Because they were trying to play the responsibility and the rule of the first bone. And when the team that always fight first bone not to assist the family, when they comes, they will see you acting like the first bone. So they will think you are the one. So since you don't have enough stature, enough posture, enough stamina to resist Satan, so he destroys your life. Before they want to see people start accusing grandmother, they go and find out. And since because people are foolish, many doctors begin to deceive you. That he was killed by somebody. No, he killed himself because he was trying to perform in an exercise that is bigger than him. He was trying to handle a responsibility that does not belong to him. When God gives a man firstborn, he has given you certain mandate that Satan cannot overcome anyhow. So if the secondborn is trying to play the role of the firstborn, to him has not been given the mandate to overcome the spirit that comes from firstborn. And that is why he easily falls. He returned back from America as a reader. Within a few weeks, he died. People think he died for nothing. No, he began to carry shoulders. You see the elder brother and greet the elder brother say, How are you? How are you? For your elder sister. How are you? To the first one. They are fine, eh? And then when he's going back, he remove 5,000 and give you. To insult him. He said, Are you connected with two hands? 
you connect it with two hands. Say thank you, sir. And then after when he, he leaves you, remain behind and you are grumbling. You reply him immediately. You reply him immediately. Ask him since you grew until now you are making money. Is it five thousand we have been spending on you? I will return back the money. I will return it back. Listen to me. Don't make yourself to be a beggar to anybody. Don't make up yourself. If people love you, they want to remember you, they should remember you. Do not be a beggar. I get what I'm saying. Do not be a beggar. The Bible says his eyes are not blind that he cannot see. God watches everything. He sees every level of insult that is being attributed to every firstborn of your house. I have seen, I have heard about the story they talk about Babati, one uh, uh, jump and pass. I mean, each time they go for family, they will say, sit down my friend. When people have dollars are talking, who are you to talk? Big uh, yes. Huh? So, they, they no longer classify it by each now, they classify by what you have in your pocket. That is how family are, they are measuring this thing now. Yes. It is an error. You have to come out from that bondage. It's a spiritual bondage. It's a spiritual bondage. When you address things from the right perspective, even your second or your third born will understand that you are still their senior brother. You came out from your mother's womb. You saw this word before them. Which entails that there are things you knew that they don't know. You see how God it takes to put them where they belong. Do not insult yourself. Do not embarrass yourself. Your junior brother returned back from America. He drives a car worth 20 million and he comes back, he gives you 20,000. And you are even happy to buy beer for you and your family to drink. It's, it's an insult. It's an insult. One of my daughter called me. She said to her mom, she's not going to school. I said, Why? She said, She's not going to school for now. I said, Why? She said, she said There's no money. I said, And your parents are in America. He said, He said, I said, I'll leave that story that story. Let's leave that thing. Let's leave that thing. Let's leave that thing. There are so many of you here, you have your junior ones in America. Some of them, they are even your senior ones. Listen to me, it's not easy to be a senior man in the family. Because there is no way you can fit well in your own house. When you turn and you look at your junior ones, they have not finished from school. Some of them are about to go to the university. Your parents are already getting old. So when you look at it, you cannot even eat good food in your house. And your wife is there pressurizing you that too is small. She cannot see the responsibility you have behind. And yet, after when you have used about 15 years of your life, such that your junior one becomes something productive. I'm talking, I thank God that the junior ones are there because many of them have seniors. So when you grow and God bless you, you will remember them. You will know that there is a blessing that is attributed to every firstborn of the family. Do not intimidate a firstborn because of your wealth. That is rubbish. Nobody can intimidate me because if I speak one word, I will bring you back to your knees. That's where my power is, my tongue. My tongue is my strength. I may not have what you have financially, but I have the mandate to speak and you will return back to zero. And when you return back to zero, you will come back. The mystery of the firstborn. The mystery of the firstborn. How many of you are firstborn? Let me see. You. If you are a firstborn to your family, let me see. You. Hallelujah. Thank God you are the first one. Yes, sir. It is possible. Wait. Eh? Yes, he is also saying that 
what if the the first born okay what if the second or the third born is taking responsibility to like the first born it is quite normal the only problem is that it should not become a way we use it to intimidate the first born listen to me even if the first born is doing nothing to change what is in the family we should not do it because there are people that they do this thing to intimidate the first born they do it to intimidate him he may not have him anything he may be managing with his own family but we should not do it to intimidate him the second born can do what the first born is doing you can assist we don't say you should not assist no you should assist but the problem is that there is a position of the first born yes some are wealthy they remain silent and that is why i am also teaching and saying that there is a mystery behind the the, the, the first born sons these are things we are trying to uncover yes there are kids there are some of them they are wealthy we have spoken about that they are wealthy and i put an example i said they say when your brother is on top of ripe mango tree you will eat ripe mango but when they get there it's not the right you are not just eating ripe one you are eating the one that have been eaten by bats so you are eating the crumbs and the leftover you are eating the leftover but listen to me no matter how you rise never do it like a challenge to your first day. He cannot be doing anything to help, but don't challenge him. That's what we call mutual respect. Amen. We leave the rest for God. My point is, firstborn need to take their place. Especially, I'm talking to especially those firstborn that they have like been embarrassed or humiliated. Simply because maybe they don't have, or maybe their, their genius was grew above them, so their capacity is beyond them. Your junior one has four cars packed in his compound. You don't have one, you are still working on food. Something is wrong somewhere. That is my point. Something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. And because what I am trying to trace is the fact that, I mean, all the other ones that grew behind you are commanding wealth you cannot command. So you are so tired. Something is wrong. You have to trace something in the spirit. There are many firstborn that they are more hardworking than their junior ones. More hardworking, but they can never possess that which they have. When you sit beside the first, the second, or the third born, or the last born, they are calling millions that you cannot, you don't even know how to start. Because your bank account is red. You've never touched a million or two million with your hand in one like this. Your junior one is talking, he's making call and he's measuring 50 million, your hand. It's like you will collapse and you are saying this man have this kind of money like that. The problem is what went wrong now? What went wrong? Some of you are into cocoa. The same your junior brother is doing the same cocoa business you are doing. But what he controls you cannot control. That's the problem. There is something that we need to reverse. The same thing that happened to Jacob and Esau is the same method we need to apply. We have to turn the plate upside down. We have to reverse the blessing, reverse the cause. Everyone needs to be blessed. The blessing is not supposed to be weak. And I thought from the beginning, I said some of these things are caused by their parents. Parents are the cause. There are some mistakes that parents are doing, they don't know it's a problem. You buy a dress for the junior one, you ignore the senior one. You buy shoes for the junior one, ignore the senior one. What you are doing is that that's an indirect way of giving blessing to that second bond and ignoring the first one. Are you getting the point now? And I said again that the second bond will just appear and insult the first bond. Third bond insult the first bond. When you want to beat, the mother said, don't touch. But the father said, don't touch. So what happened is that now you have already given authority to the second and the third child. And once it begins to happen now like that, there is a spirit that begins to lead the progress of the first one automatically. So it takes a parent to reverse that protocol, to reverse that cause. A parent must lay hand. That is why at times, no matter how your father is, if you struggle and a lot of things are not doing well, at times you can kneel before your father and say, please bless me. Bless me. Take a seat, bring to your father, your biological father, give him. Say, please bless me. Is that not when Esau came? After God has pronounced, after Isaac has pronounced the first blessing, Esau said, 
even a little. Because the father said, I have given all the blessing to your brother. And Isaac said, Is there nothing left? Is there nothing left for me? Go and meet your father and ask, Is there nothing left? The way you treat your children as you are growing up determines how their destinies will look like in the future. So you need to make sure that you treat them equally in order to maximize the blessings that we throw in their life equally so that they can grow with the same rate and dimension of blessing. It is true that we came on earth with our different dimensions of destiny, but God did not create any man to be small on earth. It's not possible. Every man was born to possess a great future, but the problem is that certain mistakes were being carried out. Certain errors were being carried out. Instead to treat the first born with more honor than the second and the third born, we treat the last born than the first born. And the last born is pride. That, don't, don't you know I'm the last born? Last born my food. When Tina was here, one to talk and say, oh, you don't know I'm the last born, I slap the hell out of her. Come on here, my friend. They crazy. They are the third born. I, move, I don't move your shit. Say the last born. <laughs> and I'm last born. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. So, when the mother is distributing food, she put one meat to the first one. And then when he has to do the second or the last one, she put like four slices of meat. Listen to me. Do you know that's an indirect way of blessing the last or the, the second to the last one and the first one? That is an indirect way of pouring blessings to people. Then we came to reverse that order. Today we shall pour blessings to every firstborn. Yeah. Some firstborns are already blessed. They don't need the blessing again. Yeah. But if you are a firstborn, take care of your responsibilities. Put this in order. But if you are not yet blessed, and, and your junior ones are more blessed than you, and it's like they are mocking at you, listen to me. We have to pronounce blessing over your life. We have to check what is happening, what is what went wrong. Some of you had money before, but now you have nothing. You can boast of nothing. I have I can I can tell you the truth. I have I have counseled people that have suffered. They are the reason why all their junior ones are doing well, but none of them have remembered them. None of them. Some of you are here, you have products you took care of. They are in Italy, they are in Germany, they are in France, they are in Belgium. How much do they send to you a month? They can even place you on a salary for the good you have done unto them. But they, they don't even take care of that. Even if you ask them to borrow you 200,000, they will say there is nothing. Nothing. As a matter of fact, if you are chatting with them on Facebook, if you make mention of anything about money, they just go offline. Or at times they just change their number. That is why somebody will be online. But if you check his WhatsApp state, we still showing that lastly seen 2019. But it's online, no? <laughs> the blessing of the first born. Do not embarrass yourself. Do not humiliate yourself. If you are my junior one, you have money. If you want to do it for me, you will do it on your own accord. I should not beg you. Because there are some people that they want to remain, they only stand in their family. He has five cars, he cannot give one to the junior brother or the other brother. Nothing. So they are the only star. You know why? They want everybody to submit to them. Everybody to see them like the yoga. So when they enter, everybody say, pa, 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 everybody should be bowing. It is an error of the first order. We have to control that order. Many of you know what I'm talking about. You know how you have been mocked, you have been humiliated. And why some people can be stinty. Some, some, some first born, their hand is like super glue. Super glue. When they are doing contribution, they can swear that they don't have a dime. They can swear. They can swear they don't have a dime. Their own money is for themselves their children and their wife, husbands and other men. That's where their money goes to. We are not saying that second born, third born and the rest are not blessed. That's not it. We are talking about the injustice. That's what God spoke to me this morning. We are talking about the injustice that is being carried out. The level of injustice. Because I know some 
Firstborn don't have wealth because they use about 15 years of their life to take care of their junior ones. Now they are nothing. The junior ones, they are something. They are mocking at them. When they come, when they look at your house, they cannot even sleep in your house. They will rent hotel. Because your house is no longer their level, the same house they breathe. They will rent hotel for seven days because your house is smelling them, but they cannot tell you. They will not tell you that your house is no longer in your capacity. I'm telling you the truth. I like myself because I'm somebody I will not hide it. It is many me, I will tell you. But they will not tell you. So it's good to deal with sincere people. They will not tell you in their mind. I'm level now, I cannot stay in this time. Jiga. You will be saying that Jiga will penetrate them. Listen to me. Listen. A humble man is a man that even if he travels to abroad and make 15 years, he can still come back to their home house and see them. There is, we thank God for Cameroon. Then there's a Cameroonian boxer that is doing well now. Ngano Francis. How many of you? Eh? He came back last time. He was with his mother eating bubble and a goosey. Inside their kitchen, the wall was not even plastered. He was still showing ground. Eating bubble and a goosey. <laughs> Some of you travel out. You will stand there at the door. You are looking at my, you are crying. They smoke. He was inside the fire kitchen with his mother. With all the money, he came out the heavyweight champion. Eh? Eh? The other year, and he's about taking the second one, the second belt. Do you know how much is that in America? You must be playing, and then you come back. He's still sleeping with his, in his mother's house, the old house. He's still sleeping there. Some of you, you prefer to the money you can give to your elder or your junior ones, you prefer to spend two months in your hotel. And when you are going back, you will give you give them five, five thousand, ten, ten thousand. Meanwhile, you spend about three hundred thousand paying hotels. What level of injustice? And then you cannot sleep again. A humble man will travel, say, come back and sleep in their house. Even if the place is no longer at your test, you can still humble yourself. You stay silent and you just do it for that time. To swallow your pride. So people will not. So, no, no, no. Let us correct these things. I get what I'm saying because I want to pray. I'm just rounding up. I want to pray. <laughs> we are going to reverse the order. So when we talk about firstborn son, it must not be a man. It is as well allocated to a female. There are some women they are more empowered than men in their family. But the truth is that for the fact that you are more empowered is not a, a sign that you should talk anyhow to. My direct follower is wealthier than me. The one I'm, I'm above for five years. She's wealthier than me. The last time I talked, she wanted to talk to me and I said, my friend, you, did, you, 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 want, you want broke? I said, don't forget, I'll get mandate. I'll be prophet. I'll be, I'll be prophesying you down. Don't try that to me. I said, don't try it. I said, me, I cannot beg any of you people. I cannot. Never. Never, I better it does. I come and beg. I pass you for five days. I can't beg you. To be grace for that. I, I better leave doors like snake. That was what God cast snake and said. From now henceforth, the snake shall eat from the dust. Eat it from the dust, the, the snake feet on dust. So if you want to begin to keep the interpretation of that statement, man was made from dust. Meaning that snake shall be feeding for man. Some of you have no shame. You have reduced yourself. That is why blessing of the firstborn cannot flow to you. Because you sold your bed right ignorantly. 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 <laughs> you see, second born card in shoe gear with firstborn say, help me and clean the shoe. You chop lizard. Or you smoke Gary. Even if you've been down, what then? Give me a shimmy and wash up. But small. For sick money. Many of you have done that. Many of you have done that. And your mind. Even if I did. 